All right, well, it's um, 6.01, so um, I'll start with the, uh, the preamble here, which is um, because of the COVID situation. And as chair of the Rochester Select Board, I find that due to the state of emergency, um, the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to addendum six to executive order 1-20 and act 92, this public body is authorized to meet electronically in accordance with act 92. There is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with the temporary amendments to the open meeting law, I confirm that we are a providing public access to the meeting by telephone, video, or other electronic means. And we're using the Zoom platform for this remote meeting. All members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform. And the public has access to contemporaneously listen and if desired, participate in this meeting by contacting the town clerk to request the invitation to the meeting, which will give you the link or the phone, which you can call in to do. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing this meeting, including how to access the meeting using the telephone, video, or other electronic means in our posted meeting agenda. And instructions have almost also been um, posted on the town website. Um, so we have provided a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access, and I guess for this meeting, that would be uh, my phone number at 802-767-4464. If you're feeling like it's not working for you and, and you want to alert someone, call that number. Um, and and we can, if we need to continue the meeting in the event the public is unable to access the meeting, it will be continued at a time to be specified later. Um, all votes that are taken during this meeting that are not unanimous will be done by roll call vote in accordance with the law. And let's start the meeting by just taking a roll call of the attendance of all the members that are signed in here. So I'm June Hendricks, I'm here. And I see Great, Pat so is here. Robin Shar Gardner are here. Vic Roboto is here. Frank Severi is here, even though he's he's headed to the sink. Um, Amy Welt is here. Nick, Nick, how do you pronounce your last name, Nick? Pichacudo. Pichacudo is here. I see Catherine Shankman is here, and Midge Scanlon has joined us, and our select board assistant Joan. I'm spacing on your last. How can I? Space <laughs> That's it's terrible. Alan. <laughs> Alan. All right. Well, it wasn't on my script. But, uh, <laughs> and we have um, Orca Media is also here um, recording this for the public. And um, Julie Smith, Martha Slater, Burma Cassidy, Nancy Woolley, Kristen LaPelle, um, Bruce Flewelling, Deb. Who are you? Oh, yeah. Deb Moore and um, Lolly. I'm not sure what Lolly's last name is. Lindsay. 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 Lolly Lindsay. Lolly Lindsay. Yep, and, that's me. And the <laughs> present here. <laughs> and I believe the anonymous phone number on the bottom is a double up on Nancy Woolley. Yes. And um, I guess as Pat, as you allow more people into the meeting, maybe you could just announce them. So Sandy we have Haas just record. entered the meeting. Sandy Haas. Haas. Sandy just chimed in, Bill. All right. I don't see her, but I guess she's coming. There we go. All right. Welcome, Sandy. There you are. So at this point, now that um, Sandy, you just missed all the preliminaries, giving us mentioning the rules that give us authority to have an electronic meeting and all that. Um, so at this point, does anyone have any additions to the agenda that was posted? Amy, Amy was that a? You need to unmute. Yeah. Okay. I um have been. Hi. I've been working on um the school 
of Rochester Senior Scholarships. And I was want, wanted to discuss with the select board tonight on um, the town um, portion of the senior scholarships. All right. Anybody else got something to speak about? Nope. All right, then um, let's start off with the um, the minutes for the prior meeting of April 27th, which I did not make, so I can't approve those, but um, Frank and Pat can go ahead and if they're so willing. I read and approved them. I second it. All in favor? Right. Aye. Uh, Aye. All righty. Um, for the um, departmental reports, let's start. Um, Joan, what have you got for updates for us tonight? Okay. Uh, first, uh, chapter about five on the continuing saga of reimbursement from the state for Bethel Mountain Road. Um, uh, at first, uh, what was it? Last week, we were told that they had sent us a check for the entire cost of site one, uh, which was about $484,000, something like that. Um, but when we checked our bank accounts, um, both of them, they weren't there. So finally, I think I was able to talk to my contact at VTrans and they were all surprised too, because according to their records and those of even the state finance department, um, the money had been wired. So uh, then they got back to me later on and said, well, we found out that there was some kind of minor snafu that had nothing to do with um, our process or um, anything, but there was, there's a federal person who sits in the VTrans department and has to do the final sign off. And uh, there was something to do with some paperwork that had not been filed internally at VTrans that held it up. So were profusely embarrassed and apologetic and said, we'll get this to you right away. Uh, well, then I just found out this morning that, um, you know, the state's uh, fiscal year ends when ours does. And uh, traditionally what they do is like a month before the end of their fiscal year, they stop sending out um, any monies because they have to work on their books. Um, this is a, something that's, that's done for everybody um, that affects state money. So the uh, information I got today was that they hope to be able to make a partial payment on site one sometime this week uh, for something in the neighborhood of $330,000. And then there will be a delay on the remaining balance for site one as well as everything they still owe us for site one, B and two. And she, Deb Harris, was not sure whether it would make it by June or July. Uh, so that's the latest. So we might have some money this week and I'll let you know. Um, if not, it's going to be a couple more months. Hmm. Part of that is just because the end of the fiscal year, but she also said everything else that's going on, which I assume means, um, you know, everybody working remotely and always related to that. Anyway, sorry for that news, uh, but I'll let you know when the money comes in, whatever it is. Sandy Haas, you're here. Do you have any insight as to whether the state is, is um, you can count on them coming through or are, are there talks about emergency cutting back on paying stuff like this? Do you have any idea about that? I have no information that they plan to cut back on payments, but I would need to Sorry. further to answer that very specific question. It, this is federal money anyway. So even if the state were cutting back in some way, I mean, it's already committed. Um, I don't think there's any question that we're not going to get it. It's just a matter of, of the timing. Waiting some more. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let me follow up with some good news. All right. Good. Um, the West Hill Bridge kickoff meeting, which is uh, the West uh, design engineers are getting started. Oh. 
Um, okay. I have to do, I have to collect a bunch of documents for the, one of the things they're starting with is um, uh, a lot of right, rights of way information and pro adjoining property owners. Um, and they have to do a survey to verify where, where exactly the road right of way is. And in fact, uh, Bruce and I were in touch a little bit earlier today by email uh, to see what documents might exist on his end or in the town office. So question I had uh, do <laughs> for you on whether you know of any, anything that might have been done on West Hill Road in the years past even the distant past having to do with surveys or anything like that? Well, they must have, they must have done one when they did that bank up there. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. You know, awesome. I would think that's just above that bridge. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I don't know if that was done, but I would think they would have done something. Plus they had to gain access through that. On well, the yeah, that's, board. yeah, that's a different issue because the access came through the Carter's property. Yeah. Uh, but I'll, I'll have to come into the office sometime before uh, the kickoff meeting and go through files there and see what I can find. Um, it's it's a problem if, even if we don't find anything, they just have to know what kind of surveying they have to do and when. Um, but that meeting, the kickoff meeting is gonna be in person at the bridge site on um, Friday. What at time? And um, what time on Friday? 11 o'clock. So, Dune, will you be able to come? I should be able to do that. And yeah. if any more select board members are going to come, um, I'm going to have to post it and all that kind of stuff. So, you're going to need to let me know. You guys interested in coming and we could post that? Um, I just soon be there. Okay. Okay, just so, we'll post it. Yeah. All right. Just so I, I get an idea of what's going on. Yeah. 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 So. yeah it's going to be the first of meeting, very, uh, many meetings, but this will be a good one to attend. Yeah. Everybody will be getting acquainted and stuff. Um, make sure to maintain social distance and bring a mask. Right. And for, but no tape measure. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, the Nason Bridge culvert replacement on Bethel Mountain Road, just below Terry Severy's house, uh, is out to bid. If it hasn't gone out today, it'll be posted tomorrow on the various state sites, and it'll be in the Herald on Thursday. And the bids will be due on June 3rd. Um, and we'll be totally transparent with any of the bidders, uh, because as of right now, we still don't know for sure that we have state funding, though uh, I've seen references made to our application by Chris Bump. So, and because it's Bethel Mountain Road, I don't think we have, you know, any reason to doubt it. But we don't we don't have confirmation of that yet. But anyway, uh, we're still going out to just share that information with them, all the bidders. Um, and there won't be uh, an in-person site visit for that one. Uh, bidders will just be invited to visit the site on their own if they want to. Um, and then the next one is Mound Push Culvert. Uh, we're making good progress on getting all the state approvals. We needed a wetlands, per uh, not a permit, but a registration. And uh, also uh, to work in the floodplain from both June as our floodplain administrator and from the state. And that is in place. So the only thing left to do there in order for us to put that out to bid is uh, getting the landowner on board. And June and I have been coordinating on that one. Yeah. Joan, um, yeah. can I ask you a question, please? Sure. Um, you said um, regarding the Mount Cushman culvert project that you're making good progress in getting approval for what? Or getting? Uh, there were approvals needed from the state. Well, we need. There's a stream alteration permit, um, which we have. Um, then that because the area around the culvert is in the river corridor and it's also considered to be wetland, we had to get approvals from the state to okay. work in that area. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't quite hear you. Yeah. Um, 
Um, and that's all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Joan. Um, we don't have anyone from the library, highway, or utilities operator, but um, I, in terms of the utilities department, I could jump ahead on the agenda and we have um, got to go ahead to appoint Jackie Harvey as a water sewer assistant is basically a, a backup to have a, some more redundancy in case something should go down with Terry and Dana and she's got the um, certification to, to hold that that form so does I'd she move. have the right certification for that, Dune? She does, yeah. Uh, yeah. Terry's got a class, our water system's class three. What's her class on her license? Is it a three or a two? She is a two. She has a two. So mm -hmm. she can't take Terry's place on the water system anyway. Oh, so not perfect. I, I've got an idea here that um, we want to talk about this in a closed meeting and come up with a better solution, something more long term. Because our community, if you look around, we're probably 60% COVID positive for, uh, you know, long in the tooth kind of thing. And I think we need to look for younger blood to take that over. And it is a process that I haven't looked into it fully, but I do know it's a, it's a year long after a person has got a, a class three license that he has to shadow someone or whoever it is has to shadow someone. So I think for a benefit of our community, we ought to look a little more long term than a short term. And I'd like to see this tabled until we get a little more information on what we really need to do there, rather than just put somebody in a position and say, we're good, but we're not. So I'd like to look, look into this a little more to make sure what we're doing is the right thing. You okay. have any problems with that? We've been looking for quite some time. We've actually been looking for uh, close to two years already. Um, so this would put an assistant in place and um, it doesn't change the way things are being handled now. Um, it, it just uh, puts somebody with some type of license as second in command if Terry were to go on vacation or something were to happen. Um, I would still like a little more time to look into this. I think we need a little time to look through it personally. And I'd take that ball. I don't care. I can roll ahead with that and look look through the state level to see what we really need to do, what's going to benefit us in the long run, and not just a short termer. But that's my feeling. Okay. Um, Jackie's license needs to be renewed by the end of June, I believe. So um you know we 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 can tell her you know not to bother or so we probably would want to make that decision fairly soon about that second person that assistant um we would love well, it, let's table it for the i'd like to table it for the next meeting then for the next meeting yeah personally i think we need to look at it in a, in a longer term solution than just to have somebody on board. I, I'd rather have somebody on board that we can go further down the road with than just somebody to just take a place. Because Terry's not getting any younger. And, and my concern is before long, we're gonna have somebody, so, if something happens to him, nobody's gonna know where all the other things are that he knows, whether it's the septic or the water system. Right. And I had a conversation with him about the chloride today, and he's hoping that if they don't renew the, the COVID-19 emergency on May 15th, that we might be able to get out of the chloride after that, the chlorine in the water. Chlorine, yeah. That would be nice. Friday. Yeah. So he's going to be in touch on Friday with me after he, you know, hears from the state. So... It's well, I can guys, see, you guys can vote I either can, way, but I'm voting. I'd like to table it myself. Yeah, I, I could see tabling it to the next meeting. But the, the main thing is that we know that there is someone that we could um, fall back upon, whether or not we appoint her tonight, that in case something does happen to Terry, that we're basically looking for in some redundancy with the whole COVID situation and in, in, in all our emergency services trying to, you know, 
but if you want to do some more research, I know, Patty, are you all right with the table in that? Yeah, I, I don't want it to go too long. Um, no, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take um, care of it. I won't, I won't balk it any longer than next meeting. I'd just like to find out a little bit more and, and maybe we can find a solution that will work better for the community in the long run. I've been trying to take Dana into going to school, but he's not really into it. <laughs> I know, Dana, Dana isn't. We might be able to find somebody else that is. I, I've got a couple ideas. All right. So I'd like to have time to research them. All right. Thank you. Sure. sure. Yep. Um, we're um, not on on the agenda specifically, but I would consider that the the COVID emergency task committee is is kind of a departmental report and. This kind of you know segues into that. Vic, do you want to give an update on where we're at and what our thoughts are around sure. the town's preparedness? And yeah. yeah, so um, just to quickly recap, we've been focusing on, I think, five different categories of issues. One is communicating timely and useful information, which we've been doing through newsletters and postings on the bulletin board and front porch forum. Uh, another is in the area of public health, where uh, we are fortunate to have uh, Jan McCann, who's a public health nurse, uh, advise on a number of, of uh, issues, uh, whether it's uh, uh, the Red Cross blood drive, which was very successful. Um, and uh, we met with uh, Jody Martin and, uh, and uh, walked through how that would be set up and, and uh, felt very comfortable that they had a, an arrangement to keep people safe. and. Uh, at the same time, uh, provide for a very much needed Red Cross blood drive because uh, the drives have been way down because of the, the pandemic. And there are quite a few people in, uh, in our uh, community who really depend on certain blood products to survive, quite honestly. Uh, so uh, that was very helpful, I thought. Um, another area is uh, in family and social services where we have, uh, set up so that people can call into the town uh, clerk's office and make known uh, concerns they have that have arisen out of or have gotten worse because of the, uh, the pandemic. And we've gotten a couple of calls and Catherine has uh, handled a couple of those herself. And we're fortunate to have uh, <clears throat> other folks uh, working with her, uh, Paula um, um, Sternberg and, uh, and uh, Peggy, uh, uh, Mc Thank, you, Thank you. Sorry, blanking on Peggy's accent. Um, and win. then, and then uh, uh, in the food security. Um, so Catherine and I are in touch with uh, uh, several times a week with people from a number of other towns, and uh, talking about with other community leaders about what's going on, what are the key issues that they're dealing with. And uh, the top three issues that keep coming up time and time again are how to keep local businesses from failing, uh, internet connectivity, uh, especially to support school children, and food insecurity. It just keeps coming up over and over again. Uh, so, uh, you know, we've had some conversations with the uh, the, the uh, food shelf at the uh, the Federated Church, and as you know from our uh, prior conversation, we were looking for an emergency food uh, distribution point uh, in addition to what the church uh, offers on a, on a regular basis. And uh, so that's an ongoing discussion. Um, and in the meantime, uh, Lolly has uh, been in touch with the food bank about setting up a uh, veggie Van Gogh distribution point here in town. Could be potentially at the uh, at the Rochester uh, uh, clinic that's uh, operated by Gifford or potentially even at the school. And so uh, Bonnie and, uh, and uh, Lindy, uh, the, uh, Bonnie Byrne and Lindy Stetson, the co-principals of the Rochester Stockbridge School. And uh, a number of us are gonna be in a conversation with the food bank about that uh, later this week. And uh, let me just pause there and see if uh, anybody else on the team has anything to add to that. Catherine or Rob or uh, Lolly. So, you know, 
so I will speak for the grocery delivery service, which oh, is was launched on uh, March 30th, and that is being done uh, a partnership with the task force, the Emergency Management Committee task force, and um, and Rebuild Rochester. Uh, it's going well. There are certain people who are once or twice a week, so we know that we're providing an ongoing service for people who are too vulnerable to go into the, the stores themselves. And there have been clusters of new people who are through the going through the quarantine and it's going well. So uh, Sue Roboto was the, uh, the person to initiate that and uh, she has now passed the baton to Mary Sue Crowley and it's going well, so. Yeah, we're getting four or five requests a week and, and yeah. uh, Julie's Very been great in the office. Uh, receiving those calls and triaging them and, and uh, making it all, all work. So it's going well. One other thing I point, I just want to come back to in terms of the, the, uh, the church food shelf. You know, we, we want to work um, and partner with the food shelf. They have the exclusive uh, franchise, if you will, with the food bank and uh, you know, keep trying to do that. And, uh, uh, you know, to have an emergency service set up, you know, the, uh, the, the unemployment, uh, just to sort of speak the, the big picture for a moment, unemployment last Friday uh, was reported nationally at 14.7%, uh, which is huge. I mean, this is this is uh, depression area uh, unemployment, and uh, in Rochester, uh, well, there are there's data published. No, show a copy of the report. There's data published by the Vermont Department of Labor about uh, local area unemployment for all towns of a thousand or more. So we know for Rochester, what's the workforce size, what's the unemployment level month to month. And uh, in uh, the year prior to March, it was about 3.3%. In March, it went up to 4.5%. We'll get the April report in about a week. And if it's at 14.7%, that means that it's about 85 people in Rochester are unemployed of the workforce, which usually runs about 19 people. So that's a big increase. And um, Han that doesn't even count Hancock and Granville. So talking probably 100 people have lost their jobs just in the past month, if that 14.7 applies to Rochester as well. And then, you know, the family members of those people. So you could be talking 200, 250 people affected by uh, uh, loss of jobs. And this is a long-term uh, problem. So. Uh, we need to have a contingency plan in place for dealing with this as a, as a food access emergency. And uh, um, I'm also in touch with uh, uh, people from the other towns from Hancock and, and Granville and, uh, and uh, the two co-principals on a weekly basis. And we were talking this morning about how uh, they're starting to hear about uh, families who are, who've been on the edge and now with loss of job, they're getting pushed over the edge. Uh, so the stuff is really starting to hit uh, in the Rochester area, and uh, we need to be mindful of that. And, and Rebuild Rochester uh, is also receiving applications from um, families with children who are unemployed, who are, in fact, uh, still waiting for unemployment benefits, um, filed more than six weeks ago, uh, stimulus checks are running out, um, Anxiety is increasing. Um, the 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 they express the, how difficult it is to even ask for help, um, and so there's a little bit of emotion. There's quite a bit of emotion mm -hmm. around processing these applications and um, trying to <clears throat> really use the messaging that Rob has put out there that this is not anybody's fault. You know. Um, that we're here to help and we want to help and we'd like to be able to, you know, put that word out more widely, in fact, so that folks have no hesitation to contact us for assistance. So We also got, we connected these folks up with legal aid attorneys who really want to hear from people who are um, um, not yet receiving their uh, unemployment benefits. And, and Sandy might want to weigh in on that because uh, sometimes the legislators can, so legislators can help with a phone call. Sandy, do you want to speak to that? Um, I confess that I was getting a snack. So what was the question? 
the question is for people who have experienced uh, long delays between the filing of their unemployment, ah. still not receiving it over six weeks. I've been uh, establishing some connections with legal aid attorneys to help these folks through the process. And I was told that the legislators are also helping sometimes with just a phone call to DOL. And uh, kind not, of not, a, not a phone call, but I do have, I do have a magic, well, uh, <clears throat> Not magic. I have a form I can fill out um, that um, that gets it into the queue. So uh, uh, use my ledge address and send it to me, and I will follow up and um, and connect with people and fill out the form and get it in. Um, I have I have only had um, limited uh, success so far. I think that, you know, unlike the Irene situation where we could look and see whose house was destroyed by the flood, we can't see who's truly being impacted. And for people who've never been in this kind of situation before, it's difficult for them to know where to go, how, you know, the process that they have to go through. And so we're trying to be there, but we also need to really explore more ways of reaching out. So on the um, so on the topic, Kevin McLaughlin, I see that you're here representing the, the food shelf, and thank you for joining us tonight. And um, and basically, want to really um, let you know that there's there's um, funding through the Rebuild Rochester, and also some volunteer help that's available to the extent that you can ramp up the, um, you know, to, to deal with any increased need. Do you want to speak about what, what your thoughts are on that? Uh, we have, <clears throat> we have our volunteers that have been with us for many years and know the process and, and do it very well. So at the time, <clears throat> we do not need more volunteers. The space is too small to do that. Um, the number of people uh, this past month was 18, and we delivered to um, a few older people who do not want to come out, uh, and we had one or two new people. So we ended up with about 23. So the average, the average is 16 to 18 showing up, and we delivered to a few. So we're up maybe one or two. Um, and that seemed to cover it. As far as we work off of donations, we get donations from Rochester, Hancock, and Granville. Uh, but the bulk of the donations come from people who donate to the food shelf. And they can do that by sending it to the Federated Church Attention of the Food Shelf. So, at the time, uh, we're well stocked. Uh, we have, I think we received three calls. One was a no show. So um, at the time, we, we do not have a, uh, uh, a situation that's out of control or that we can't deal with. What? This is Vic. Uh, could I comment? Uh, just uh, um, so as I was just speaking, and Kevin, I don't know if you were on the line here when I was talking earlier about the sort of the bigger picture and, and unemployment in Rochester. But I think what we're seeing is a lot of people who've lost their job, who've never gone to a food bank before, and are either um, don't know how to do it, don't know where it is, don't know what it's about, or are ashamed. I mean, it's just a natural human response yeah. to something like that. So if we were to, to conduct a, you know, significant communications campaign, you know, using flyers, front porch forum, <laughs> whatever, yard signs, in fact, yard signs, I saw in Randolph, they have yard signs that say, need food, come to the food shelf, it's easy. And then they give the address and phone number. They try to make it as easy as possible for people who need to get over that barrier, that emotional barrier, and take advantage of service that's available. So my, my question is, if Kevin, if 
if we were to mount a, and by we, I mean, with the food shelf, you um, come up with a plan for making a, you know, well uh, known um, announcement that food shelf service is available. Uh, would you be able to ramp up, uh, you know, to more hours a month than are available now? Because I could see that that would generate more um, uh, demand for the, the for the food shelf. The um, food shelf is posted uh, all month in the um, <clears throat> post office, and um, <laughs> being uh, Rochester, Granville, and Hancock. Uh, the word is pretty much around where the food shelf is and it's available. So if you want to post something else, you can go ahead. Uh, but I don't see a large, um, at the moment, I don't see a large uh, need. At the moment, there is not a large need. They are not coming to the food shelf. We, like I said, we have maybe two or three more than usual. Yeah, but yeah. what I'm saying is that it, just because people are coming there doesn't mean the need isn't there. Because we're talking about people who have been employed for, you know, who knows how long, a long time. And now suddenly they're thrown out of work and the prospect of getting a new job is pretty grim. Uh, so this is a level of need that I think that our community has to take more assertive action about to go and find and help these people. Um, and so what I, what I hope we would do is you know, work with you to work out a contingency plan of how do we uh, put together, uh, I think is going to be need for more hours, more food, more money, uh, uh, more aggressive communication and do it in a way that is, that is you know, respectful and is charitable towards people and inviting them to, to come and, and take advantage of the, of the, of the uh, food that's available. And this is happening in other communities. And, and, and uh, again, I, I think once the, the Rochester specific unemployment data comes out in about a week for the month of April, I think there'll be even more data to sort of prove the point. And May is supposed to be even worse. And in talking with, uh, with Linda Anderson uh, from Capstone Community Services and, and other people this morning from the other towns, you know, people are, are aware that those twelve hundred dollar uh, stimulus checks—they're uh, going to end, and the extra unemployment benefit is going to end. You know, that only has an eight-week life to that, and uh, so I think we have an opportunity now to prepare for uh, what is very likely to come as a, a significant increase in need uh, for supplemental food in this community. And I would just ask you to work with me on this and. Uh, Let's 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 really go after it. Um, we are we are well prepared for people that that come. Uh, we have uh, the advantage of being uh, probably being a month ahead um, in supplies. We cover. I'll repeat again. We cover Rochester, Granville and Hancock, those are the three towns we cover. Right. So <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure you're gonna see the amount of people that you're, that you're um, Well, we just would but in any like to that, have in place, have in place um, knowing that there is, there, there's funding available and backup help available or if it does, it's basically trying to plan ahead just to make sure that um, that we're prepared, you know. And if if we don't see that, that's wonderful. But we'll um, not be caught, you know. Um, you, you mentioned the the lack of space, meaning you know not enough room for more volunteers. But I guess it'd be more not so much more volunteers at the same time. There's maybe volunteers that could take up another shift. And um, you know, under your guidance, be able to, um, you know, have it open more than one one month. I know that people can call in, but um, you know, if it gets to the point where you're getting a phone call every day, you might want to um, take up some 
the offer of some more volunteers to, to staff to have some more open hours, I guess is what my thought is. Just so you know, there's there's backup help available. You know, people want to help. Lolly, Lolly wants to add to this conversation. Yep. Yeah, I just I just wanted to share um, something I thought was kind of surprising, and I'm not sure if you're um, you're aware, Kevin, but we surveyed a couple of other um, food shelves around in the area, um, and the numbers suggest that the need is there, but people are going elsewhere. Um, if I add it all up from Granville, Hancock, and Rochester, the numbers from last year, just at two of the food shelves that are that are well, one's close to us, the other one's pretty far away. You're looking at 264 individuals that have that have gone and, and utilized those resources. Um, I just wanted to add that number. It was a surprising number to me um, after seeing or an understanding that that you were around more like an 18 to 20 number um, a month. The um the people you're talking about also come to the food shelf uh, and then they go elsewhere to shop like BJ and they take advantage of the food shelves there while they're there, it's free food. So that's been taking place for a long time. Uh, so that really doesn't concern us too much. We have uh, been aware of that for a long time. But as far as the demand, now they can call us anytime. We're open to be called anytime. Uh, the number is 767-3030. If they need to call us, they're free to do so. We set an appointment and meet them. Um, I don't see that changing rapidly right away. If it does, we'll adjust to it, but we have, uh, no problem covering what we're doing at the moment. I wonder if you would be um, willing or interested in um, sort of a medium idea in which um, we open up for like two days a week on like a trial run and just see if, um, if we see more people and if we see a greater need um, that might help us decide. If you want to do that on your own, go ahead. But um, we're not going to do it um, right now through our food shelf because we're maintaining what we have and we don't have the demand. If the demand is there, we'll be there for them. Soon. Yeah. Um, uh, this is disappointing. Um, I'd like to request that the uh, select board take a vote on using the Constable's office space for emergency food distribution center. We have talked about that a little bit, and there's um, I'm not sure it's it's optimal. Frank, Pat, do you have? I, I don't. I toured it with Uvic, and I I personally think that the space isn't really gr good enough for that. I would think that um, what Kevin is offering you is an opportunity to promote the food shelf as it is and even if you open it at your pace in the parking lot and say i'm here at mm -hmm. such and such a time each thursday and friday or whatever days you want to be open and then you call kevin have him come down and if you see a greater need i would think you'd be able to tell i mean the, if kevin doesn't think there's a greater need you folks obviously do so kevin's willing to or so he says he's willing to you know if he gets a phone call to feed so if you advertise the food shelf throughout the three communities on a time limited basis and volunteer have your volunteers in the parking lot and when somebody shows up they call kevin kevin comes down gets their food and goes on and I would think that that would <clears throat> that would see you would find out then if there is an increased need. I'd say but, that's right, Frank. What's that? I'd say that's right. And and then you'd know if there's an increased reach. If you advertise it throughout the three communities, 
and do all the advertising you want to post it at the town office say food shelf is available thursday from nine to noon or or uh friday from uh three to five and you have your volunteer sitting in the church parking lot and if somebody drives in for food then you can call kevin and kevin can come down and and do his thing in the food shelf without anybody else as far as he's got the food shelf set up to the way that it's worked for a number of years for him. 20 and then years. You would all be able to figure out if the need is there. And then if it needs to be increased, we can add money to it. We can also uh, do more hours if so needed. And that way we solve the, the problem without doing anything else. My biggest concern is duplication. I don't want to see duplication. I, I think that's kind of too bad. And if this thing grows, then we can look for another venue. I, I think this would serve the emergency system as well as as what Kevin's saying. Um, <clears throat> if he doesn't think there's a greater need, and you do, the way to solve it is to offer more hours and see if it works. And if you've got volunteers that are willing to sit there at different times and wait, and if somebody does need food and they stop in, Kevin will be down to, to serve them. And, and that's the way I would do it, and just to see if there is a need, you know, to, to answer his questions and put your questions to rest. And then you feel whether or not it works or not. And if we need to increase the size of the food shelf, then we'll do that at a later date. But my problem obvious. With, the, with the downstairs of the, of the town offices, it's a dump site, and it needs to be have a good plan down there on what the future should bring for that building. And I personally think the school would be a better option for any kind of food shelf in the future. But we also are looking at that for our voting coming up this fall. And we've gone, we walked through the school on Saturday. So there are a couple rooms there that we kind of want to reserve for our polling, as our polling station and voting area. So we've got permission to do that. And we walked through it on Saturday and it would be a good fit for our voting polling stuff so um i would like to go at this with caution i think it's it's better and do it in a way that would work for you plus work for kevin it's not for not me that. it's for hungry people <laughs> yes i i understand that vic i'm not i'm not disputing what you're saying i'm just I, saying I, if but you what want i to, don't what i don't you, understand is 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 to say one of your volunteers will stand in the parking lot, regardless of the weather, regardless of anything. And if somebody should drive up, we'll call Kevin. They get served. Kevin goes back. And then we stand in the parking lot till somebody else drives. I mean, really? That is the easiest solution to this? What, As opposed you have a to better actually, one? You want to just yes, start another, yes, a, I do another have, food I, shelf? No, I think it's better to work with some of the volunteers. We're not asking Kevin I know. anything That's differently, but he, if he would allow another volunteer to come in and be there at a different hour just to test it, like a soft run, as, as Lolly was suggesting. I mean, that's working in partnership, not standing, having somebody stand outside and call him if somebody drives by. That's really putting the burden on volunteers, and it seems a bit inflexible. We, uh, we've been running this, I've been there about 12 years. Um, we have it under control. We do it very well. We have what we need to do it with. Uh, if people need us, they can call, anybody can call. I would advise you to just put out the number and tell them to call. Uh, as far as people coming in and working in the food shelf, the answer is no because we are responsible for it. And we have to get it through. The USDA comes in and inspects, food shelf inspects. We're not gonna go any farther than that. If you wanna do something other than that, that's up to you. Can I interject here? Um, according to the open meeting laws, um, we have on our agenda a report from the Rochester Food Shelf we don't have anything on our agenda saying we are going to vote on anything. Therefore, we cannot vote for anything tonight. We can put it on next the, the agenda for the next meeting, but anything that we, any decision we make, anything we vote on 
has to be warned on the agenda prior to the meeting. You can't just sure. invest in the meeting and vote on it. So this would have to go okay. to our meeting anyway. I, I just wanted to say that I think we're all very grateful for for everything the McLaughlins have done and the church has done from from erecting this food shelf to you know from its uh, beginnings uh, under Beth Kennett to the present. What I think the COVID-19 task force is trying to do is under the category of emergency preparedness. And if that emergency hits us in June or July, uh, Kevin, you're saying you feel confident that you can handle it. What we need to feel is confident that should there need to be an extension of the services, that there is a contingency plan in place, just like um, Vic pointed out. And if you could even just sit down with us and discuss how that could happen, I think it would go a long way to uh, feeling as though this particular uh, possibility will be uh, planned for. We'll deal with that when the time comes, if it comes. Um, that ramping up isn't a problem. But first we have to see that it is going to happen. Well, one of the of things right that... now, <clears throat> there's no indication right now that that's going to happen in these three towns. Well, the, the indication is, well, we'll see in another week what the unemployment rate is. And we are getting some indications of need. And in order for people to go to a food shelf, they have to be welcome to it. They have to understand where it is and how it works. And, you know, this is all new for a lot of people. Um, so, you know, if we were to go ahead and put it a... Uh, and a communications campaign out. Um, go ahead. I'd say go ahead. 90% of the people in the three towns know where the food shelf is. Some of them have been there. Some come only occasionally because they only need it occasionally. Mm -hmm. So you go ahead and put your campaign out and okay. we'll see what the result is. That's the answer to that. I mean, that that's, um, that's a starting point if we, um, you know, if um, someone can sit in the car and, and we can advertise that the food shelf is, is open on, you know, a couple days a week and, and see what what kind of interest we can generate. And then we'll, instead of theorizing, we can actually have, um, you know, data and, and, and move forward. And if um, if it's mm -hmm. Kevin, if you get flooded with, with um, requests, I, I would hope that you would be open to, um, some, you let us know if you need more money and there's more money available and if it needs um, if it makes if it's obvious that your your phone is ringing off the hook I would I would think that you would you would consider um, you know um, expanding the the hours does that make sense what I would what I would think you would do would be to advertise the date the food shelf is open with the caveat that they can call if it's an emergency and they need food. Start yeah. there. Start well, well, right now it's it's that date is is one day a month, and what we're talking right. about is advertising that date at, at least one day a week, and then see if we get more response from that. Because when you say that the food shelf is, I know, yes, you can call, but uh, we're we're really trying to make it um make it obvious. So I guess that's um that would be a starting point. We're not going to be open one day a week for two people or three people or four people when they can come on the designated date that we're open. We certainly can take a lot more people on the designated date than we have now. Kevin, this is Rob Gardner. Do I understand clearly that, that you guys, the food shelf has no interest in a partnership with the town to expand hours and expand service. Would you say that was- Not at this moment because there isn't a need for it. But you're saying you have no interest in that at this time? Not at this time because there isn't a need for it. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, um, I guess we'll um, move on from there. Um, where was I? Was 
some new business maybe um we have some new business that is a little bit more mundane than than food um but we have the issue of concerts on the park and um joe has gone ahead and scheduled concerts on the park and and has got a lot of um excitement about that um we haven't really talked about that much in terms of the um emergency committee i i think that it's um um dune excuse yes. me i brought it up because i um am the park committee now <laughs> yep. um and um joe had informed me that he had gone ahead because he normally does that every year of course and it's great that he does that that he'd gone ahead and and um organized those i think there are five specific dates and he might have another one coming um but anyway i wanted to check in with you because i normally we do get um, permission from the select board just on a, on a normal year for permission to use the park for an event um and so it's for this and i've also uh, next on the agenda is the fourth of july parade but that's another thing to discuss but anyway i wanted to from what i was hearing from the governor when i've been seeing his his conferences it sounded like he was opening up but would be by then it would probably be okay because it's an outdoor event those concerts on the park and it's fairly it would be fairly easy to do the social distancing on the park um however i don't know what i wanted to find out what the um what the um, board thought about this and if you had any specific information further um on from you know from the state about that kind of thing well, I guess we're all still waiting for the ongoing information from the state on this. Um, one of the one of the aspects of this whole situation that that we're realizing is important is to um, to have a little bit of energy and a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. I, I personally think that the park is big enough and bands can play loud enough that we don't uh, that we could probably be on that park and and have some space and 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 be safe what do you guys think about that well i think all of this is a very liquid situation it changes three right. times the governor right. is talking so um i would say that we could continue with our plan as it is now but listen to uh the guidelines as they unfold and see where it leads us um you know if the numbers turn around and go up all of this conversation we're having would be yeah you know right done so i just say we'll continue to monitor this until that drop dead date that joe would need to do a cancellation and, uh, and into account then patty the first i believe it's the first sunday in july is the first date he has i think he has all of the sundays in july and and I think the first two in August planned. Um, I have it written down elsewhere, and I don't have it right in front of me. I'm sorry. So that's a, a month and a half. It should be pretty um, clear by then. Maybe we just have the musicians just turn it all the way up, and everyone stays in their houses, and we can hear it anyway. Well, I looked on. I looked in my records from last year, and last year at this time, the first meeting in May was when I asked you for permission to have those concerts on the park. So I wanted to make sure that I. You know got it in the you know in the pipeline you know and so that to think about also because i have to know about um the i have to send out the the information for the fourth of july um, parade by the first of june and that's next on the agenda so both those things were in my um on my own personal agenda to to uh, find out from you about that was all I, well right now i don't think you could have them I mean, there's only a, a ten crowd, a ten person limit. So right. well, the so the, the um, they really were talking. To wait. And they're letting the fa the farmers markets go ahead, although with various um, provisos. And obviously, you'd have more than ten people show up for that. Although I think they have to have a lot of spacing and stuff. Right. Um, and how do you police that? I don't know. And see, from from my own personal viewpoint, I was looking at the park. Like Dune said, it's a big park. And people often do sit fairly far apart, although obviously they sit in groups too. Um, but it would be pretty easy to sit far enough apart, I think. I don't know. You know, I, we have to wait and see. It, obviously, it, to get. Um, but I just wanted to get it. I just wanted to get it in in um, everybody's. You know, 
mind about what, you know, this was something coming up that has to be decided on. And, you know, Joe with the concerts, particular Joe has done the work to go ahead and book these um, entertainers and everything that's through the recreation committee and also through the park committee. And so um, I just, um, you know, I, I remember back um, in the days when the majority of the people parked along the edge of the park and sat in their cars to listen to the music, and then they would honk their horn instead of clapping at the end. Not, yeah, when I was a little kid. I remember that. Little, I still I remember that. Kid, yeah, when I was a little kid, the, the most of the band, it was most often the town band that played, you know, every every week, it wasn't other various different musicians, it was them. And we used to just, even if we were playing on the park, my sister and I would run back to our parents' car and honk the horn. You know, and you're right, absolutely right. That was the thing to do. <laughs> it might be worth um, keeping in mind that the, the farmer's market rules right now prohibit music in order to discourage people from gathering. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Have a whole system of distance in order to operate the thing. They may change that if things get better. But that was that was sort of the, the the business behind that. So I don't I don't know if you can have both both yeah. operating the same. Well, I don't think you have to make any specific decision tonight, obviously. But I just wanted, like I said, to get it in your in your um, radar. You know. Yeah. No, yeah. it's definitely a fluid situation, and and it's going to have Catherine. to be um, determined. Well, I'm going to jump in here. I've, yep. I've been following the governor's press conferences religiously when I can. And what I heard today is that they are, um, what is he saying, um, turning the spigot slowly. So I think for us to make a decision today at the beginning of May about what's going to happen in July is really premature. Yeah. Um, yeah. If, right. if Joe can book act if joe can book acts that are flexible great if they need if they need a guarantee then maybe we need somebody else but i think we can probably go forward um most of us sit in our little in our little fam familial groups on the park um and we can make our own choices about who we sit with well so. he has already booked he has the names of everybody he sent them all to me so but I'm, I'm hoping that's going to be okay. The other thing I'm concerned about, since I need to know by June 1st, so I could bring it up at the next meeting, um, um, is the 4th of July parade, because I have to order, um, I have to order like the trophies, et cetera, et cetera. Now the 4th of July parade is, is a different kettle of fish. Because, that's a total different kettle of fish. That's, that's yeah. a much denser crowd. <clears throat> And it's you know. something we've done for years and years. I've done it for almost 20 years. I've been in charge of it. And I've had a number of people email me or call me and ask me if we're going to be having a parade. And I can't answer that because like you said, it's a fluid situation, but that's the other thing I just wanted to bring up that that's something I would really love to be able to do because I think people need not only, I mean, of, of the many types of help that people need, they need mental like cheer up, you know, it, Things to make them feel better help you know uh, things like that special events do you know yeah now better. the fourth of july parade has got to be 10 to 20 times more crowded than most of the concerts on the park are oh, of course of course and uh, i mean it's just something I, I want to do it but i don't know um and i didn't right. want to go ahead and tell people it's canceled because if we can have it i would like to do it and i will do the work i'm i'm willing to you know um, so anyway, Just keep in mind, keep in mind that the Addison County Field Day is closed and the Barton County Fair also. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So well, they, they've already canceled their themselves for this year. Um, if they're in August, we have one more meeting before um, I have to make a decision as far as ordering trophies and things like that, and sending out the letters, and that would be the last um, select board meeting in May. So if if you're okay with it, I'd like to bring it up again and. And maybe in two weeks, things have, will have changed enough that we could go. Yay! Of course, we, we can will. We will enough. see. But I'm, I'm, um, I'm kind of of the mind that we probably should, should cancel it. Oh. Um, but I guess we can. We can in two weeks. Things are happening so quick. We don't have to make a decision right now. We could table that for two weeks. But okay. at this point, I would think that it's probably Catherine? not a good idea. <laughs> Uh, I just have one question. 
Um, do you know what the earliest time that Joe could cancel um, any um, people that are coming for the concert? You know, let, uh, let, me just, let me just say that most of the musicians are so hungry to perform. Oh, I know. I, yeah. I can't, I don't I can't think, imagine they aren't. <laughs> I don't think it's going to mess up their schedules much, you know, because most <laughs> okay. of them are performing, you know, like we're meeting here through right. different streaming methods. But um, I'm just wondering, Martha, if your committee, are you the only one on this committee? I am the 4th of July Parade Committee and have yeah. been for almost 20 years. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's a big job. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm just wondering if we couldn't, you know, sort of get together and maybe strategize a different way of doing it, but still having a town celebration of it that would be all COVID compliant, you know? There might be other alternatives, ways we could get around things, just the way people are trying to uh, work out alternatives to graduation. Well, that's a thought I'm willing, I'm willing to, uh, to do that if there's somebody who would like to, to talk I, about I'll, that. I, I'll, uh, I'll do some idea exchange and brainstorming with you. I think that could be fun. I'll volunteer for you, Martha. Excuse me? I said I'll volunteer for you. And who is that? I can't hear. Oh. Molly, Molly. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I took it over. Heather Masterton started it probably 25 years ago. And when she moved out of town, she I had been her, her um, helper. She turned to me and she said, oh, you know how to do this. You can do it when I leave. And she left. And that was that. And I tried to get several people to help, but nobody was that interested. So I've been doing it ever since. And it's become, you know, there's traditions like Dylan Dudley on his on his bike, you know. And people, you know, and the the Kennett Farm float throwing the cheese at everybody and things like that, you know. And, um, you know, it's it's fun. I'd like to do it, but again, if we can't, we can't, you know. So, but if Catherine, if you and Lolly and some others might be it, interested, you know, it's worth just a, a, a fun meeting of thinking of different ways to celebrate that particular very important holiday. Well, you know, and now that we can have meetings of 10 people or less, we could all hang out on the park or something or my front porch or whatever. <laughs> uh, this is Nancy. Yes. I'd like to just interject one other thing. Sure. Far before these other things, Memorial Day is two weeks away. Oh, right, of course. Nobody has given any thought to Memorial Day. Right. It's highly yeah. unlikely, given the directives from the governor, that we are going to have a Memorial Day parade. Yeah, yeah. you're right. True. Now, Who's who does? Here? Who normally organizes that? I've never known, Nancy. Well, it's a military. But I mean, <laughs> is there a the American there? Legion and the VFW? Okay. But okay. I would suspect that they have already discounted it. I haven't heard anything about it. Yeah. No, I haven't either. I'm sure you haven't. <laughs> That's too bad. You don't right, know so anybody we'll, um, to talk to about it, do you, Nancy? That I couldn't hear you. you. You don't know of anybody that we should be in touch with about that, do you? Um, possibly Steve Martin. Um, Bill Harvey will be home another week. Um, I think I'd start with Steve Martin. <clears throat> okay. All right. I, I wonder if other towns are canceling their Memorial Day parades. I haven't heard I'm, of them, Well, I know that Granville, that's... Hancock, Stockbridge, and Pittsfield, and Rochester are basically all one. They go from one town to the next. And well, you're but right Steve, you're... Steve, I think you if you called Steve... I think you might get information on it. And Jeff Brown might know too, because I know. Yeah. Well, I think Steve is probably more in charge. Okay. All right. So we're going to um, table the 4th of July parade. Um, it doesn't sound likely. The concerts on the park, we're kind of going to be fluid with and, and see how things unfold. That's still a month and a half for the first one of those. Thank you for talking about it, I appreciate it. Yeah, sure, no, it's, it's all part of it. Um, we have, um, so it it's kind of goes along with that. We have an application for um, the town park for Green Up Day. Um, 
So who's who's in charge of Green Up Day, and are they they feel they can do that in a in a um, socially, um, in a physically distant distant fashion? Hi, yeah, Nick here. Uh, yep. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm in charge of that, and and I I feel that we can do it uh, responsibly. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, the last few years there hasn't been a huge turnout anyway, and um. There's 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 hardly ever been large groups of people gathered uh, at the same time, you know. Um, and with that said, out. though, what's that? And they're also spread out too. Yeah, and they're spread out, and you know, um, my, I would be there, and anybody that wanted to help me, um, to be there to make sure that people are, you know, staying within the guidelines that we need them to be. And uh, so there's other logistics to work out. Um, but as far as like being safe, I feel that we can pull that off. What's the date for that, Nick? 30th. Okay. And where were you planning on having this take place? I see that you made a proposal for the park, but that was uh, before. Uh, are you thinking of going back down to the school now that you can do that? Um, well, I was... I don't know. I'm, I'm, it's it's uh, it's up for discussion. I I, uh, I I thought that the park would still be a good idea, uh, just only because it's it's a little more visible than the the you know than the school. You know, when uh, I mean people can still see the school when they're driving by, but if it's on the park, it's more of a thing. We might get a couple more people interested. I don't think it would be we'll get that many more people interested that it would become dangerous. You know, but uh, you know just Having a little bit more awareness of it is, um, I, I don't think it's a bad thing. But if if it's uh, if there's a few people that that believe that it's not a good idea, then you know, then we can move it back down to the school. I just thought maybe a a, a change would be good. But, but could you just uh, like outline everything. just briefly what exactly it entails? The 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 green up day activities would entail. Well, it's, it's just very simple. I mean, we'd, we'd have a, a, a table there and uh, with a few things, on, you know, on the table and food and and uh, and then people would bring their, uh, you know, we, they'd either come and get their bags, their green up bags, their green green up bags there, or they can get them beforehand at the town clerk. Uh, and they would then they we uh, look at the map and we see where uh, there, there's a need. Uh, and then they would go out and, and gather trash and then bring the trash back. And the, the, the only, the, the one thing that I'd want to discuss would be that where we would put the truck, um, uh, where, where, you know, if, 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 if we could, um, park the truck somewhere else, uh, somewhere on the park, um, either on the street or, you know, in a area so that we can dispose, you know, we, we can throw the, the trash that people bring in, into the truck. If, if, you it, park, if you park the truck on, um, I think, it, is it called Park Row between the park and Park House? That's the name of the little street, right? Park Row? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That might be the best spot if you were going to do that. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. Well, I don't, I don't see any um, problem with it. It sounds like it's an activity focused on sending people in different directions to go pick up trash. Um, what do you guys think? I, I'm fine with it as long as the the truck isn't actually parked on the grass. And, you know, it stays on the pavement somewhere. The pavement, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I guess I'm okay with it if the truck stays on the pavement and you don't use the front so much of the park because that's being tracked by the the uh, farmers market. And that grass isn't coming back very well at all. And mm. uh, we're going to need to have some a different approach with the farmer's market coming up, I think, if they're going to continue to use it. Um, I'd like to see that move to a different place because that grass is really, you know, the park is our signature of our community, really. It's, uh, and it's been getting a lot of use with the, with the farmer's market and that grass in the front is all gone. It's just not there anymore. Mm. Last, and, last year, the, uh, people that run the farmer's market did 
step forward and say that they would assist us in the restoration of the grass. So perhaps just put that little word out that this is the time of year for them to step up to the plate. Maybe well, they plate. did, they did uh, reseed it last fall, but it's it's still not gonna, if you put a lot of use on it, it's just not gonna hold up. It's gonna become a mud pit. That's basically what's gonna happen. Yeah. Taken from my farmer background, I can <laughs> see what's gonna happen. Yeah, well, they were taking responsibility, begging us, please don't move the farmer's market area. So, you know, we could just touch base with them again, see what, what they want to do on that. But as for Green Up Day, um, I, I'm i fine with it as long as it's it's managed safely. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, and, and touching on the farmer's market, if um, we're, it's allowed to go forward, this is probably the perfect opportunity to spread it out throughout the park and increase the distance we don't have to we don't want to stack everybody up next to each other and we might as well use the park and this would be a good um catalyst to to get it off of that part of the park you know so june yeah um the rules and regulations for the farmers market were sent out by email today and they're all pretty specific they don't talk about location as such, but they are notifying all the um, particular vendors, and it is particular, um, and, and the rules that are going to have to be followed. And then I wanted to just mention it to Nick also. They can't have open food and things uh, with the farmer's market, and so that's just a clue to you with food and, and green up. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was thinking. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the, if you like, I'll send you the rules. Okay. So, okay. So we'd have to, so people wouldn't be allowed to eat there right in the park. Probably well, I don't think not, you can provide food. Probably <laughs> right. not a good oh. idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it would have to be a foodless <laughs> endeavor. All right. It could be room. it could be open food that you can't have. I don't know. <laughs> I think probably Beth or Asha are the ones you should talk to about what you can do with food. Right. Right. They were sending things out for the farmers market. The food is just for you know just to entice people to come and and just for them to grab a little something as they're leaving. You don't have to get trash. You know, but they're following they're right. following rather specific rules from the Department of Ag Agriculture. Yeah, I think yeah. that um, that's probably um, I, I'd probably stay away from that aspect of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Talk to make Beth. <laughs> I mean, you could maybe have you know um, drinks and and cooling yeah. in a in a in a tub of alcohol and ice. You know. <laughs> you get a cookie, water bottle. Cookies and <laughs> cookies and bags. Yeah. <laughs> But um, anyway, they'll they'll yeah. know about that. So okay. um, thank you, Nancy. All right. Okay. Um, before I forget, um, should put a shout out there that um, there's very a uh, very low response so far in completing the census. I, I heard a number like a, like 35 percent of the people in Rochester have completed the census forms yet, which is um, not um, not that good. I so I know it's easy to overlook it with all the drama that's going on right now and things that seem much more important but down the line it is important so just a shout out to everyone out there and and you and tv land that um take the time to fill out your census uh, are we going to have i don't think we're going to have door-to-door -door census takers are we yes joe is one of them oh uh, yeah so that's yeah. going to go forward he just met with them this week yeah to get fingerprinted and all that stuff so um, Dune, I'm confused because they keep having uh, announcements on the on the news about how they want you to go online to a website and fill out your census form. They don't ever mention anything about paper forms, but yet I heard from uh, did Catherine just say that Joe is signed up to be a census taker. So, wait, what are we do? You know, what should we be looking for? We all should have received something from them already. Yeah, I, I haven't. You I have, it? and it's already gone back. Yeah. Um, February. Me too. Yeah, we had ours months ago and went back in. 
So okay. if you didn't get one, Martha, you can go online, I guess, and do it. The main thing is to um, spread the word. That's something that um, wouldn't hurt to um, put in the paper. Yeah, okay, that's why I was putting it down. Well, the other thing in putting it to paper, they really need to understand how the funding that comes to this area is dependent exactly. on the census. It's really right. important. Yes, it is. All right. Um, so um, we have, um, we need to appoint uh, EC Fiber representative, which is um, John White. And I think he's willing to continue on to that. So I'd move to uh, um, reappoint John White as our EC Fiber representative. I second that. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. So that's unanimous. And also, I, um, I believe that we've been asked to appoint uh, John White is our health officer. Um, we've been asked to appoint a COVID specific health officer. And I talked with John White and he is also willing to um, take that mantle on. So I'd, I'd move to appoint John White to, to that position. I'll second that. All in favor? All right. Aye. All right. You got him twice. Thank you, John, if you're out there watching. And we also have um, a first class in outside um, liquor license for Sandy's Books and Bakery. I guess that's two separate licenses, one for inside and one for, for out. So that's a, a hopeful sign that they anticipate reopening. So I'd, I'd, um, I'd move we uh, approve those applications. I second that. And all in favor? Aye. Right. Aye. All right. Um, uh, Dune, we didn't really vote on the application um, for the using the park for green, for green up day. Oh, okay, you're right. I would um I would move that we approve that application to um for them to use the park on green up day. And I second that. No, no, all in favor. All right. All right. Okay. Thanks for keeping track of that, Patty. Thank Steve. you. And and also. Doing, I'd be willing to call Steve Martin on the Memorial Day parade. All right. Yeah. All Thank right. you. Okay. Let me just write that. Um, so I think that is really, unless what? anyone else has something. What about like, Amy? Oh wait, no, Amy. I'm sorry, you're on there. Yeah, this is important. You're you're up. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> So as I said, I've been working on the, um, the scholarships that we used to uh, give out at the end of the school year to our graduating seniors. In that, um, there was two scholarships that were given out by the town, and that is the Kirkpatrick Memorial Scholarship and the Martin Farms Appreciation Award. And I guess to start with, I wanna ask if um, the select board wants the school district to include those two scholarships in the application and communications that we're sending out to um, our seniors in the surrounding schools. By all means, yes. Okay, <laughs> great. Um, so I can do, I, I have a lot I of information um, and I do uh, have to um, um, Julie. Someone had a question down there. Was that you, some supporting documents to you guys that you can okay. take a look at. Um, just a second, N Nancy, you had a question? I just wanted to confirm that the Martin Farm still is an active scholarship and that there are still funds in it. Uh, the information I received that was that yes, there is an account that is the Martin Farm, it's a CD that has funds for the Martin Farm. Thanks, Amy. Okay. Um, so uh, speaking of the Martin Farms Award, from you guys, we'll just, you need to determine the amount that you're gonna give for the scholarship. Um, I have looked through the wills and paperwork and stuff and I have my recommendation, but um, that would be something for you guys to decide. And then uh, second for the Kirkpatrick um, scholarship, what I'm asking the, the select board to do is to review the criteria um for the scholarship and to possibly make some amendments um 
the current Kirkpatrick um, scholarship criteria was created by uh, the select board back in um, 1990. It is um, not a part of the Kirkpatrick will that the, this criteria was created. Um, the current one states that the graduate has to maintain at least an uh, 80 grade point average, is accepted at a four-year school, and has demonstrated good citizenship in school, community life, and who otherwise would be unable to pursue further education because of low family income as defined as total family income below the median family income for Addison and Windsor counties. Um, my recommendation would be um, to one, remove the uh, needs-based criteria be, um, as far as kind of hard for the seniors for, to determine uh, what individual's median family income is. When we had them in our, um, we're graduating from Rochester, we were able to look at things such as like bring and reduce lunch applications to be able to identify um, that need. Uh, the other thing that I would recommend is um, to change the wording from accepted at a four-year school to open it up a little bit more, uh, maybe to such as um, uh, that they must be accepted in an accredited program of higher education. This could help open the scholarship up to um, uh, a student who wants to be like a vet tech or something like that, uh, or a two-year program. Um, the grade point average, the AP grade point average um, can, can kind of be transferred into the new proficiency-based grading, um, but you know that you might want to look at that as well and change it, change the wording to maybe you know a strong academic background or or, or something. On um, like I said, the 80 grade point average, we can with the new proficiency-based grading, it can kind of be transferred over. Um, so that is what I would like to ask you guys to review and talk about um, possibly changing those, those um, the criteria for the Kirkpatrick scholarship. I just wanted to add to that, you know, RN programs are two year programs. Four year is a, a bachelor's in nursing, but to be an RN, a registered nurse, you only need a two year program. And we definitely need medical workers. Right, I think it would open it up to a lot of uh, possibilities for accredited higher education. Um, and again, this was developed in 1990. It's probably time to review yeah, it and, to change. and change stuff. Um, and so, so what, the, what was the, uh, your, your thoughts about a, a, what you thought would be a reasonable amount for the Martin Farms Award? Okay. So you have been studying on it. I'd be curious. I have been studying on it. So um, kind of quickly, from what I have been able to glean, and please, you know, any town elders might be, know a little bit better, but what I was able to glean is that the original uh, funds that were put into this award was the, in the amount of $2,000. It has been put into a CD, and since 70, 1972, it um, now is at $4,000. Um, but as we all know, uh, CDs, um, you're not going to uh, accumulate a lot of interest on CDs every year, and the award has to be um, is only allowed to be given on the accumulated interest of in a hundred dollar increments. So I guess my recommendation is that you would stick with a hundred dollars um, for the award because within a year at um, you know four thousand dollars CD is. Um, going to be hard pressed to, to earn a thousand or a hundred dollars. Yeah. So, so really, this is really a symbolic gesture. You know, a hundred dollars isn't going to go too far in terms of helping someone get through school. This is a book. Yeah, a book. Well, yeah, it, exactly. It, it, you know, it's the small stuff. Um, you know, while I've been working on this scholarship stuff, um, you know, there's just 
there's not as many scholarships out there. You know, these there there are just there are a lot of small scholarships, and I think our town did a very good job making sure everybody who graduated was able to have some type of scholarship. Um, you know, but they are kind of symbolic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, right. And the, the nice thing about the Martin Farm Award is that the um, anticipated, uh, even in the trust, it says in the event that the Rochester School is incorporated into a larger school district. So they were, you know, thoughtful and in, in, in that. Um, so that's what I would recommend for the Martin Farms. And then of course, I'd like you to review the, the wording, the criteria for the Kirkpatrick. And then uh, part of the second part of the Kirkpatrick is the amount that you're gonna give in the original um, application that was created in 1990. It says that there was uh, $1,400 given as a scholarship. Um, but I believe looking at the uh, town, the um, uh, the budget it is a thousand dollars budgeted for this year, and I don't know if that also needs to be put into uh, officially in minutes, you know, into a motion of what the amount of that scholarship will be going forward, or if you want to specifically not put it in there. Well, I think that is it was already figured into the budget, so that's been kind of accepted already by well, that would be, the budget. Right, well, does, does that kind of trump any, any you know, motion that you guys would make in the future, you know, or the motion that was made back in 1990 that it's supposed to be 14 I think it's kind of a year, it's always been a year by year thing. Is that right, Nancy? I remember uh, maybe it's pretty much, and if you look across, it's been $1,000. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. Over the last few years. Okay. And it's already been voted on. Yeah. Right. And so that basically is voted on by the electorate. So that, that does. Okay. Um, so anyway, to move forward for, for this year, I mean, if it doesn't happen this year, it doesn't, but we haven't been able to offer these scholarships in the last, last year either. Um, and I think it would be nice if we could get, get this ball rolling on um, getting, you know, even though they are a little bit symbolic, but. Um, Amy? Yes. I have a question in a related matter. Um, um, since we haven't had our high school the last couple of years, I've been putting together an article the last two years, um, get contacting all the seniors and putting like a paragraph about each about what they're going to be doing the following year, uh, just to let people know, because I always wrote about the seniors when we gradu they graduated. So uh, if you have an, it, you know, um, a list of the kids who, will, who are from our town who would have graduated you know, here, who are elsewhere, um, you know, their names, I would appreciate it so that I could contact them for that. If you have it and you could email it to me, that would be really helpful. Okay, I will get you in touch with the person who could provide you with that. Okay, thank you, I, I appreciate that. Sorry okay. to interrupt, but I thought this was a good time to ask. <laughs> I, I just wanna make sure I do that so the kids get some recognition. Yeah. Good work, okay. Amy. Is that something that we need to vote on or are we just reassuring the school board that we are standing behind the figures? Um, I believe that if you're going to change the criteria of your scholarship application, you probably need to have something official. Well, we're not, uh, we're not, what are we making as a change? What? The, well, my recommendation was, I made three recommendations to change in the Kirkpatrick Fund scholarship, but if you don't want to, then we don't have to. That's that's up to you. The, Just in the criteria, because yeah. the, the monetary part, the voters are voted in on right. the budget. It's, it's simply in the but criteria. The, but um, stepping away from it being required to be a four-year institution to, to open it up to people that are um, doing a an accredited um, educational system. That's, um, I think that's that's reasonable. What do you what do you guys think? I, I think that um, how fast do you have to know about this? Yeah, that's another question. Um, I think that you know where are we? We're so seventh of May right now. So we're in May. 
Um, right. I mean, obviously, the the sooner we can have this, the better. Um, but if, I guess if um, just because we need to get the applications to the students. Um, so right. I'm just wondering, and to what extent we can just change the original stipulations of the of the um, you know, the the fund. <coughs> of the original criteria, you mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps Amy could just write out what she said and give it to you. Yeah, well, yeah. that's what I was thinking. She could she could make the changes she wants and leave it in the town office and then we we can review it and we can also look at if there's any uh, legal ramifications right. of us readopting it, I would think. You, it wouldn't be too late to vote at the next meeting, would it? Or no. Would it? no, that's what I'm thinking. The next yeah. meeting would be yeah. a time to do that. Yeah, and that and would give us a chance to review the document yeah. and find out if there's any legal ramifications with altering right. the criteria. Right. Right. And if it's, you know, and, and if it doesn't happen this year, like I said, that's that's okay. We but you know, if we can, it's nice to get these things um finalized. So do you guys have another meeting in May or yes. 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 The fourth Monday. The fourth Monday. Okay, so if I yeah. uh, did what I was the suggestions I made sound reasonable to you? Yeah. Yeah, they sound reasonable. It'd be nice to just have them write it out in a form and then we can look at it and read it and then we can okay. read it there. I will do that and I will leave it in the office, in the town office to be reviewed. All right. Thank Hang you. On. Maybe you could put it on the next agenda for next yep. meeting. Yep. yep. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, anything else anyone would like to speak about tonight? We had it on agenda for a re rebuild Rochester Foundation report. Is there one there for um, them? I kind of felt like that kind of happened already with um, um, Catherine just want to make it um, public knowledge and reiterate that the fund is out there and um, encourage people who need to um, to you know applications are available at the town clerks or I guess you can get them online now too but um, there's you know there's help out there for people that are um, coming up against it and um, just, I guess that's what the what the report was about to let people know. Everything on the agenda has been covered. Yep. Here we go. This this is Deb. I have a couple little questions. Okay. Um. So does the select board keep meeting all summer long? Wait. Can you say that again? Does does the select board keep having its meetings all summer long? Oh, all year long. Unless you want to vote, take six off. unless you wanted to take six months off. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other one is there a way that we can find out right away about the decision about the chlorination of the water? Um, Terry, I talked with Terry today, and and hope one of the reasons why they have to do it is because it's under uh, we're under the COVID. Yeah, I know. COVID, uh, thing so. This Friday if is the fifth May fifteenth. Right, right. I heard so, so he's hoping that if they open it up and don't renew the, the COVID issue, um, that we will be able to stop. But he's that's what he's hoping. But he doesn't know. He so, called them today to find out about it. Oh, and uh, he talked with the state rep about the chlorination. Good. He will find out more about it on Friday, so. Okay, well, so my question was, how how will we find out? Uh, uh, It'll I, taste different. Yeah. <laughs> imagine Rob, Rob and the task force will let us know. Say it again. Uh, Rob and Vic from the Oh, task right, okay. Yeah. Okay, that'll be good. Thank you. All right, um, well, there you have it. Thanks all. That was um not quite two hours, but um one of our longer meetings. <laughs> yeah, we we'll have a longer one for a while. But um and thanks all you out there in Orca Media Land. Thanks for coming and, and making it available to everyone else. And um don't be shy. You can always be part of the, the faces on the screen if you want to be part of it <laughs> next time.
Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Good meeting. Good night. Yep.